When strange things start to occur around Chernobyl, it's up to you to uncover the secret at the heart of the Zona. Katie, and today we'd like to talk to you about Zona, The Secret of Chernobyl. It's from a Polish game studio called Rebel. Zona is a post-apocalyptic survival game for one to four players in which players take on the role of one of ten scavengers living in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Each scavenger has their own unique character power, attributes, and starting items. Some additional things to note are the fortitude track on each scavenger's board, and that tracks the damage and the fatigue dial that each player receives. If your fatigue dial would overflow, you would then take damage. If your fortitude track would overflow, then you would gain a weakness to one of your attributes. If you would gain four weaknesses, you'll die. You'll use your attributes to attempt various tests upon your journey. When performing a test, you roll three dice, and the results either add or subtract from your attribute to determine the outcome. Be careful, because if you roll two of the radiation symbol, you will take radiation damage. You're not completely bound by the roll of your dice, though. Uh, some items will let you alter the dice results, and you can always raise your fatigue to force the test and re-roll one die. The goal of the game is to be the first to get to the sarcophagus at the center of the Zona and uncover the secret there. In order to enter the sarcophagus, you must have first uncovered two secrets from the four secret locations around the map. Each secret location starts out locked though, and you will need to fulfill the requirements of its lock token in order to interact with it. Zona takes place over the course of several rounds. Each round begins with an action phase in which players uh, get two actions that they can use to move their characters. Uh, they can use them uh, to get locations action, open a secret location, encounter one of the threats in that location, or just to recover some fatigue. After each player has taken their actions, each scavenger will draw an event card that corresponds to their location. Some places don't require players to draw events. Each event may present players with choices or force them into encounters, and they are necessary to pass in order to uncover secrets or win at the sarcophagus. After the event phase, the first player will draw and resolve a rumor card that has effects that may pertain to all players. Rumors also usually raise the admission level. Whenever the admissions level reaches the last spot, a radioactive emission occurs and all unprotected players take damage corresponding to the sector that they are in. There are two ways for the game to end. First, there are no more cards in the rumor deck and all players lose, or if all the players are defeated. Second, if a player is able to overcome the event card in the sarcophagus during the, that event phase and wins. All right, so this game has a ton of different stuff going on in it. It's, um, it's definitely one of those games where you're moving around the board a lot trying to um, gather equipment because you can't just go straight to the sarcophagus, yeah. of course. You do have to go to these secret locations. The things there are hard to face. Those obstacles are hard to overcome. So you have to be going around fighting the smaller battles, um, and gaining items and um, just preparing yourself for what you're gonna be facing in those locations. I mean, it's just, you can't just straight barrel through it. You have to be doing these little side things, otherwise you're gonna go in unprepared. And you really have to fine tune what items you are taking. So mm -hmm. you might find some items aren't worth keeping because they'll take up valuable space in your bag that could be used by better items. So you wanna sell those items at one of the bunkers around. You do have three types of items. There's some small ones that don't take up any space in your bag and go off to the left of your board. There's worn items that go off to the right and they take up either like your headspace 
face or your arms because like a helmet goes on your head that sort of thing mm -hmm. um it might be like body armor but you can only wear one in each uh body slot and then there's uh, different slots in your bag for all of the other items mm -hmm. and that it can be really frustrating when you find some really good item or you get like an artifact and you have to ditch something else and you can't uh, and you hadn't stopped by a bunker first to sell it and then that's just wasted money yeah. um, rubles or whatever yeah just, so you need to definitely keep on top of your items and make sure you're fine tuning to just the right items because some of these items um, it's a use it once and it's gone some of them you use it once and then you get it back the next round some of them you use it and every time you use it it takes a damage until it fills up a track and then if you don't go to a bunker to remove all that damage then you lose it permanently yeah. as well so it's a lot of equipment maintenance and uh maintaining well and it makes sense like with the gun, if you shoot a gun, you're running out of ammo. So you have to go and restock your ammo and that sort of thing. Um, something that I thought was interesting in this one is that some of the um, the item cards, the they have restrictions on them. Like this item will give you um, radiation damage if you have other items like this in your bag already. Um, and that I thought was really interesting because you, it may give you something really amazing, but it may be damaging you the rest of the game. <laughs> um, so you have to really watch that. And then the, um, the secrets that you get from the secret locations, sometimes those give you damage for other things that are in your bag as well. So by the end, you're having to really try to mitigate a lot of that, trying to carry those secret items into the sarcophagus without killing yourself before you even get there just because you're carrying two like radioactive items in your bag and things like that so i thought that part of it was really interesting is having items that actually are great but damage you in the process yes. and since there are two types of threats the two types of encounters mutants and anomalies mm -hmm. um, some of the items do focus on helping you uh, face one of them versus the other. So you can kind of focus on, okay, I'm going to try to only face anomalies if possible mm -hmm. or only face mutants. You will end up doing both, mm -hmm. um, but there is a little bit of tuning you can do there. Some of your stats might influence that as well because yeah. some stats are better versus anomalies and are more likely to come up in the anomaly uh, tests. Mm -hmm. And some of them are more likely to come up in the mutant tests. Um, so when you pick a character you might be focusing on okay you know this guy he has a higher um stat here and that will help me against mutants so yeah that is something you have to take into account so when you get your character you do have to try to formulate your plan around what your character's already good at i mean there are ways to change that up too but i mean you're not just stuck with those stats because you've got you know the different armor and you know things like that it'll help raise it yeah, I did like that there was the three sectors, the green, yellow, and red. So there was this increasing difficulty depending on what sector you were in. And um, the anomalies and mutants are separate between the green and yellow sectors. Mm -hmm. And the events are separate between the two. So, Getting harder, progressively yeah. harder. So green's like where you start out and it's fairly easy tests, fairly easy events. I mean, I say easy. You, there's a good chance you'll fail them anyway. But... Um, they're, they're definitely easier. When you feel up to it, you move into the yellow zone. You know you're going to be facing harder um, mutants and, and harder events and things like that. One thing that we haven't mentioned yet that I don't think we have is reputation. Everybody uh, starts uh, out uh, with uh, a uh, specific uh, reputation. It's either neutral, good, or bad, and you can change it as you go along. And this is one of those small things that can have big effects. I think there's yeah. a, a space in the green sector where you can trade, uh, lose your reputation. So it goes down one um, to gain an equipment card. And I thought, oh, you know, this will be easy to get my reputation back. So I quickly went from neutral to bad. And then I struggled and struggled <laughs> to try to get it back from bad up to good. Um, and it seemed like every event I was drawing was like, oh, if you're good or neutral, something great happens. But if you're bad, you get kicked. 
you know. <laughs> so uh, definitely want to watch your reputation. Yes, and... it's a much bigger deal than you might think in the game. I I just happen to have a card that says, oh, you can choose to do this thing and, and gain an item, or you can go up on your reputation. And since I was neutral to start with, I was like, oh, I'm already full with my... My backpack's already full, so I'll just take the the you know the star, and uh, I went up on the on the track to a good character, and then I I had a much easier time than Ryan because I kept drawing events. I was like, oh, if you've got a good reputation, they just give you this thing. I was like, nice. I mean, that wasn't everyone, but there were several encounters that I didn't have to have because I was a good character, and apparently people just liked me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently there are only 21 cards in the rumor deck, so there's a limit to only having um, 21 rounds possible before the game ends, mm -hmm. because once that deck's gone, the game's over and y'all lose. Um, so you might see all 21 rumor cards, but all mm -hmm. the other event decks are fairly large, so it'll take quite some time before you see all that this game has to offer, and uh, it's pretty random, some of the things that occur to you. Yeah. Uh, so I would definitely check it out if it sounds of interest to you. We enjoyed it, and I think you might too. I want to <laughs> add one more thing in there, is that um, normally we review very family-friendly games. This one's probably a little bit scary for some children, it's just with the um, type of illustrations. That there's are, some gruesome... There's some gruesome illustrations in this. Fine for adults questionable for kids but um it's the art is very good it's just rather creepy <laughs> um with the mutants and things like that so but yeah i i thought that zona was a lot of fun it is a two to three hour game so be prepared for a longer game but um once you get going it's very easy to lose track of time so yeah um we both really enjoyed zona so check it out and be. Subscribe to yeah. our channel for more <laughs> videos like this one. Is that a little weird? Let's do it again. Okay. Is that weird? No, let's go. <laughs> okay. Zona, the secret of mm, Chernobyl. 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 I feel like it's hard to say. Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Okay. <laughs>